Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the most anticipated video, especially if you follow me on Instagram, ever. Diet changes you've made for your skin, oh my gosh. I seriously, I wanna create a whole entire video on this. Okay, I have been putting this off for a while now for a few reasons. One, I'm gonna talk about a lot of health stuff as well as just like my own personal beliefs that I know some people will disagree with and that's fine. But if you are struggling with perioral dermatitis, acne, or just like skin problems in general, maybe you'll find something of value in this video. Like this is a video I wish I had and I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I read a lot of articles when I was going through my own skin troubles and these videos, like hearing other people talk about it and sharing what actually worked for them helped me so much. Now, I will say, obviously talk to a doctor. Like, talk to a professional. Don't just be like, ah, Catherine on YouTube said this works and I should cut out gluten. Like, no. <laughs> but the other thing is, I wanted to make sure I had a real good grasp on my own skin and making sure that it was tame, that there were no flare-ups, no problems for months before I shared any information because I have shared some information back when I had a vlog channel. I shared like, this is what's really working for me right now. And those were just temporary Band-Aid fixes. They did not get to the root of the problem. They did not really, really help to clear my skin. And now I'm here today. My skin has been incredibly clear for months. Of course, I do have random breakouts and things that happen, but this, I have only got, I filled in my brows a little bit and I put on mascara just so I didn't look half asleep, but I have absolutely nothing on my skin. Like you can see just the bags under my eyes. I've got nothing on my skin. And this is what my skin looks like today. Compared to a year ago, it's so dramatically different. So here is my skin video that you guys have been waiting for. I wanna share the whole entire journey so you understand where I'm coming from, the struggles that I've had with it, and kind of my mindset going through the whole entire thing. And I have got photos, documentation of this. And I also wrote down a lot of notes, okay? So let me actually go to my skin folder that I have on my phone. The first photo I ever took of my face when I was having a flare up, just like bad skin, and I was like, this is like a before photo type thing, was May 16th, 2019. I was living in upstate New York, and I actually remember that I was having some skin problems before I took this photo. That winter, my skin was very flaky around my nose, like right down here. And it was red, flaky, and I was like, what the heck is going on? And I thought that meant that I had dry skin. So I was exfoliating, I was washing, I was moisturizing like crazy. And if you guys know anything about perioral dermatitis, that is the exact opposite of what you should do. But I just did not know what the heck it was at the time. So that's how I was trying to treat it. And there was nothing that I could do to make it go away because I was obviously doing the absolute wrong thing for the problem. So I ended up, Guys, I don't even follow Tati. Like, I if you guys know who Tati is, she's a YouTuber. I don't even follow her, but I ended up seeing like a YouTube video or something from her that she was coming out with these like halo skin supplement something. And I was so desperate. I saw the before and after photos I think that she shared and I was like, you know what, let me try this. And then the next photo that I have is my after photo, which was taken two months later and my skin looks pretty clear. Like there's a few spots in here where I'm like, oh, you can still see I had breakouts. There's still redness around my nose. But for the fact that that was exactly two months later and like around my nose was bright freaking red, like I'll take it, that's a win. So how I initially healed it was honestly taking those supplements. I stopped taking them and wouldn't you know it, the following winter it ended up coming back. At this point, I thought it was because of the cold weather. That was my thought was, okay, it's only flaring up in the winter, it heals by the summer. Granted, like, the year before, like, I was taking supplements to make it heal by the summer, but still, it like, never came back until the winter, so I was like, it's the winter, it's the cold weather. Oh, man. Um, yeah, so that actually wasn't the problem, but I was in denial. I literally wrote on here, denial. <laughs> Because I was totally just in denial that like, there's nothing I can do, this is what it is, it flares up every winter, you just kinda gotta deal with it. Well, I actually follow Sarah's Day, I've mentioned her a few times, and she struggles with perioral dermatitis as well. So I had seen in a few of her videos where she mentioned it, and like when she was pregnant with Fox, it flared up, and even postpartum she put like, nappy cream is what they call it, diaper rash cream on her face, and like that helped, and 
she would share a bunch of different things, but it didn't seem relevant to me. But that's when I first started to realize, oh my gosh, maybe this is perioral dermatitis because it appeared the same way hers appeared. And I started to do a little bit more research. Like what are the causes for this to flare up? Like why would this be coming to my skin in my 20s? Like what the heck is going on? I think I was, well, 2019. So I was like 25 when I first started experiencing it. Basically all of my research told me like, it's an overuse of products, which I never used a ton of products on my face anyways, like skincare, makeup, anything like that, never used a ton of products. So I was like, that's, that's not me, that's not relevant. And the other main one was steroid creams, or just like steroids in general. Never, nothing that I put on my body, in my body, is steroids. So I was like, this just doesn't make any sense, but I know this is what it is. Like I looked at all the photos and mind you at this point, I probably should have consulted a doctor, but I didn't because I'm stubborn as fudge. The winter of 2020 slash 2021, I have one photo on my phone from January where I can see I'm making this like scrunched face to try to cover it up but I have a flare out happening right here. This is still when I was very much so in my denial phase of it. There's just nothing that I can do to make it go away. I was, okay, so when it would flare up, I stopped washing my face. I would only wash my face with just water. So like no soap, no nothing, just water. I was trying not to put any makeup on it. Mind you, that was during my time when I was filming YouTube videos that were primarily just sit down videos me talking like this. So I would put makeup on my face. I would try to cover it up because I didn't want that to be the focus of the video. And I was honestly like embarrassed by it. Like I wanted to feel comfortable on my skin and I just like did not feel comfortable on my skin when it was flaring up. So specifically when I filmed YouTube videos, I would cover it up on normal days though. I did not cover it up at all. I wasn't using any moisturizer. I wasn't using any like oils, anything on my face. Like nothing went on my face during a flare up, but still, denial of there's nothing I can do. Let me just like avoid putting anything on my face and that's really it. So the real, real progress photos happen starting in July, or not July, August of 2021. So this first photo, like my face really isn't that bad. There's just a few, like there's a little spot right here. I've got dots over here, here. Nothing too, too crazy. This next photo is hilarious, okay? It was me at the lake with my hair being wild, but it's just a photo that I have as an example of my face. So this was August 24th. So 23 days later, my face was flared up pretty bad. And Mind you, I was at the lake in this photo. It was summertime, the humidity, like I thought maybe that was something too. I was like, maybe it's just like the dry air, lack of humidity, like maybe that was really affecting me. So like this was at the lake and like my face was still so flared and I was like, this isn't normal. Like something else has to be going on and just the progress photos continue and they just slowly get worse. Like this is December. I remember specifically Thanksgiving this year my face was already flared and then we did the hot ones challenge and the next morning my eyes so it was primarily like i would have redness dots and things would appear around my nose if it got really really bad it would come down around my mouth on both sides but it was that hot ones challenge having insanely spicy sauces that the next morning I woke up and it was on my eyes and I was like, something is seriously, seriously wrong. This is when I started to realize maybe it was something in my gut that was happening because obviously I just put like insanely inflammatory foods inside my body. And then the next day my face inflamed, I was like, maybe something within my gut is going wrong. Like that, that was the first inkling, but I still like really didn't dive too deep on it. This is when things got real bad, real, real bad. So I was at the lake with my sister and brother-in-law for New Year's and my face itched. Like it was blistery. Oh, it's gonna make me cry because I just remember this vacation so much of just like being so embarrassed by my face. And this was still during COVID times and I was so grateful that like wearing a mask was still a thing because I could cover my face. Like obviously yes, yeah, grateful that like masks <laughs> 
help to stop the spread. But like I was, I was honestly just so grateful that like I had a reason to cover my face because I was so, so embarrassed by the way that my face looked and it itched and it, it was so irritating and there was just like nothing I could do to help it at this point. So kind of when all of that was going, I think it was fall of 2021. It was after the lake, I believe. I would really have to check my Amazon purchase history to be like, when did I start buying things? But I started to do a little bit more research, trying to figure out what I could do to solve the problem. So I read more articles, I watched YouTube videos, and there were a few things that I did. I shared this in a vlog a while back, but I bought this tea off of Amazon. It was this like skin tea, I don't know. Someone recommended it and I was like, come on, I can buy this, I can drink this. And I do think it helped. Do I think it was a Band-Aid fix? Yes. But I do think it helped a little bit. And it's funny because now this tea is available at Whole Foods. So I'm like, it can't be that bad of a tea. Like it can't be that bad for you if it's available at Whole Foods, right? So I signed up for a subscription of that. I think I drank it for three months. And as you can see, like my face was still progressing. It was still getting worse. Like it really wasn't getting that much better. And I was like, this can't be the solution. I stopped it. And maybe I should have stuck with it for longer. Maybe I would have seen results, but you know what? Ultimately that wasn't the thing for me. I also bought, you can see all this stuff behind me. We're gonna talk about it. Someone on YouTube recommended this, okay? And this is not in English, there is legitimately no English on this packaging. I have no idea what the heck I was putting on my face. But this ointment, okay, bought it off of Amazon and this helped to not only relieve the itch, it's slightly cooling, but it also, I think, just like helped to kind of minimize the problem a little bit. Like I would put it on at night and in the morning it wouldn't seem as flared. Now that might be just because I wasn't putting anything in my body and my body was resting and it was just like healing a little bit, but I do think that helped some. Someone else recommended that you should get on just like a daily vitamin. I wasn't taking daily vitamins at the time, so I started with Ritual. I have been taking Ritual ever since. None of this is sponsored. Someone said like it's a lack of zinc, so I started taking zinc. Like honestly, talk to a doctor. Don't like try to d diagnose yourself. And then I also started taking Neem. This I really need to throw away. I've just honestly kept it because I knew that I was going to film this YouTube video and wanted to show you guys the bottle. But it says support skin and immune health. So I was like, game on. Started taking Neem. I almost took this whole entire bottle. There's like maybe 10 left, maybe. And there's 90 capsules in here. So I did take a lot of these, but after, I mean, if I took like 80, that's two plus months. Like I was like, this isn't working. It's not doing anything. I stopped it. And maybe I should have stuck with some things for longer, but I didn't. Some other things that I did is I switched to toothpaste that didn't have fluoride. That's another thing that I saw in my research was that it can, be caused by fluoride. So I switched to Bite. This is actually just like the best freaking toothpaste ever. I really enjoy it. It's kind of weird. Like if you guys have ever seen me um, take these, oh wow, well one just kind of like popped out there. But it's this tiny thing, you bite into it, you wet your toothbrush, and I swear it's like normal toothpaste, but it's environmentally friendly. When you first sign up for it, they're gonna send you this glass. I literally cannot think of the word glass there. Jar, and then every time your refills come in recyclable, I think they're recyclable, not compostable, little packets, and the whole entire packaging is recyclable from then going forward. And you just keep this and you just keep filling it up. So really enjoy this. I did switch to natural deodorant. I've tried a couple of different natural deodorants, but right now I'm really enjoying Mega Babe. I also switched my hair care so my shampoo and conditioner made sure that it didn't have any sulfates parabens like any of like the bad stuff that can be included in your products totally cut that out and then i switched from so i was using cenafil right i feel like a lot of people talk about cenafil as it's like a natural cleanser and stuff i was using that back in 2019 when actually the problem started and I switched my cleanser because I was like, maybe that was the problem. And then I started washing with no nothing on my face. And then the more research I did, I tried a milk cleanser. So Versed Milk Cleanser. This is the one that I have used for a while. And I do enjoy this. I'm not a skincare professional here. And I know some skincare people are going to get mad at me. Someone recommended this one right here, which is a cleanser for dry skin. 
I legitimately think I maybe used this once. Maybe. And it's this huge bottle. Like, waste of money for me to do. But I was just, like, so, so determined to heal my face. And after all of this stuff, okay, yeah, my face got worse. I remember driving home from the lake and I took this photo, like this is m me in the car. Uh, I just remember the place I was in. Like I was so not in a good place at all. And like, yeah, I had a rough year the year before, but like I really think because of my face and just like insecurities I had with that, it made everything worse. So this is the month that I ended up taking off YouTube and I'm glad I did. Like when I got home, you guys, like you see this, uh, it just breaks my heart. And then this is three days later where I was like feeling really, really confident because it wasn't as red. And it's funny to see the progress because then legitimately on the 11th, my face looks mostly healed. Like if you zoom into the photo, yeah, there's still spots and stuff, but like I am on the way to healing. And then on the 26th, it got worse again. So at the start of the year, 2022, I decided to make some big changes. I was like, I'm sick of this, I can't do this anymore. Clearly there's something that is seriously wrong within my body that is causing this and none of my Band-Aid fixes are helping. I ended up doing a lot more research. Again, I went on Instagram, I searched for the hashtag period dermatitis and I saw this one post that I'll include right here. And this girl basically said that she had been struggling with it for, I believe it was like five years and once she tried celery juice, she healed her face. And I was like, what the actual heck is going on here? I'm like, celery juice? If I just drink celery juice, my face is going to be healed? Now, something that works for someone else might not work for you, but I was determined to try anything. So you guys know that I started my juicing journey. I just made my first ever green juice. It might look a little weird with the coloring. There's like carrots and kale and it's the green and the orange that's making it look weird. But this is fabulous. Like best green juice I've ever had. Not to hype myself up, but like hyping myself up. This is far better than any green juice I've ever bought. I ended up going on Amazon. I bought a friggin' juicer. <laughs> I'm not a thing. It's like how much money did I spend in this whole entire process? I bought a juicer and I started drinking celery juice and I would make other juices and I did a lot of research. Like one of my goals for 2022 was heal my body with food. Food is fuel. And I was just doing research. Like what are anti-inflammatory foods? What are anti-inflammatory juice recipes that I can make? And like what was actually going to help heal my body. So I started juicing. I read about like a leaky gut and gut health and like trust me I am no professional. I still feel like I don't know like barely anything but I started drinking bone broth. I got myself some bone broth here. It's become my new thing. You know I'm on like a gut healing journey and just doing like so much research and I decided to try bone broth and I absolutely love it. And man like bone broth is delicious. If you buy the right bone broth, the one that I got at least, incredibly expensive. Was it worth it? Maybe. Like, I think it helped some. Do I think it was the answer to all of my problems? Absolutely not. I ended up cutting out alcohol for all of January. I started to eat more real meals. <laughs> In 2021, that was Catherine's I'm going through a lot of shit, I'm working on some inner stuff, and I am healing from the damage of my last relationship. And I honestly wasn't eating that great. There were plenty of nights where like my dinner was popcorn. And that was it. There was no nutritional value to the meals that I was eating. I was eating a lot of ice cream. It was oatly ice cream, so it was dairy free, but it was still a lot of ice cream. So I was really determined at the start of the year to make myself real meals, to not eat out nearly as much, and to just like focus on what I was putting in my body. And that was definitely a struggle for me some days, like especially when I worked late, it was a freaking struggle. My eyes are barely open right now. I feel like I'm barely functioning. Oh gosh, don't knock that out. Stay there, okay. What time is it? 9.48 and I'm making myself dinner. The old me wouldn't have done this. The old me would not have done this. We were committed to this clear face. Salmon, 
marinated. I was so freaking determined to heal myself. And then Sarah's day, again, I've got like a note here that I limited sugar because of Sarah. So Sarah during the holidays had shared that her, or I think it was like post holidays. So it was like right around the time in January, she had shared that her periodermatitis had flared up and it usually flares up for her when she has a lot of sugar and stress. And I was like, oh my gosh sugar. I should cut out sugar. So I ended up very much so limiting the sugar that was in my diet. No more oatly ice cream. Yeah, no more oatly ice cream. Because <laughs> I was already like the pancakes and waffles and stuff I was making, I was using agave instead of like cane sugar is what I'm specifically talking about here. So I did allow myself to have fruits and other natural sugars compared to here's just sugar plopped right in, you know, like I just tried to cut that out as much as possible. And I do think limiting sugar helped immensely, like so freaking much. So thanks to Sarah's day for that. Here's where we get to like the really, really good stuff in my opinion. And it all comes down to diet. Like if you are currently struggling with your skin and you're like, I have no idea what the heck is going on. I recommend looking up a face map in terms of like, I don't even know what to Google, but I think it's, you could just probably Google like, acne face map or like skin problems face map or something. I don't remember what I've Googled before, but it will show you like common areas and like why you may be having problems there. So like your T-zone, for example, could be hormonal. I don't know if that's accurate. Your jaw, if you're having breakouts, it could be because you're eating too much sugar. Like none of that could be accurate. Okay. I'm just like giving examples here. So take a look at something like that and see if that could lead to anything because it could just be like, ah, breakouts right here, stress. What I ultimately realized is like it came down to everything I put in my body. It didn't matter what I put on my skin. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this guy. Okay, we'll talk about him in a second. But it didn't matter any of that stuff. It all came down to what I was putting in my body and that reflected in my face. And I am not gonna be one of those people that's like, drink a ton of water and your face is gonna be cleared because trust me, I was drinking a gallon of water a day when my face was at its worst. It didn't help. Like, yeah, I think water does have obviously good impacts on your body, but like, it didn't help. There were other things that I did. Let me, before I jump to this like whole food conversation, I do want to talk about this. So this is another thing from Sarah's day that I decided to purchase. This, I'll include a link to it down below. This is now more expensive than when I bought it. Funny enough, I used this a few months ago and my man was laughing at me because, I mean, it looks hilarious like when you put it on. Like... He immediately Googled it and found the price and he was like, you paid that much for that? And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I paid like 50 or 60 bucks for it. I think I bought this on a Black Friday sale with Sarah's Day's code. I love sporting influencers whenever they have codes and stuff. And it was far cheaper back then. But I remember her sharing that she used this to help with her periodontal dermatitis as well as just like her skin in general. So this is LED light therapy. This one has red, yellow, and blue light. And I did a ton, a ton of research on the benefits of each of those. What one I should be using for my skin when I was having a flare up compared to like when I wasn't having a flare up, like what should I use now for my skin now that my face is like relatively clear or is clear. And I would do this a lot. This helped a ton and it's still just something nice that you can do like if you like meditating or just kind of like shutting off your brain like I would put this on and I would just sit there and chill and try to meditate and clear my mind of all of my thoughts sometimes I would put this on and I would watch a tv show or I would listen to a tv show but I did really really enjoy this and I still randomly use it not as much as like when I was having my flare-ups but I still randomly use it let's get back to the food conversation so I distinctly remember two conversations that were had, or like two specific moments. One, I was on the phone with my mom and I was talking about my skin and like struggling with it and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what's kind of weird is like the more I analyze and the more I think about it, my skin gets a little bit more clear whenever I'm traveling compared to like when I'm at home, it really flares up. And I didn't really put kind of two and two together, but my mom was like, well, you've been traveling a lot with your sister. And whenever you're with your sister, cause my sister is gluten intolerant. So we eat a lot of gluten-free stuff. She was like, maybe you're also intolerant to gluten. It's just like appearing for you in a different way. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe. Like had no idea, but like maybe. I had been soy free for a while or so I thought because in 
2018, I uh, did like this like elimination diet and then reintroduced foods back into my diet to figure out what were triggers for me. And I realized that soy made me incredibly, incredibly gassy. And as well as like soy and chocolate was a major problem. It like made my throat hurt. I sneezed a lot and like it felt like my throat was swelling and I was like, I'm allergic to this, but normal cacao, I was totally fine with. So soy had been cut out of my diet for a while. Dairy for the most part was cut out of my diet. I would only have dairy if it was butter and that was it. But I said, you know what, if I'm gonna commit to this, let's totally just cut out dairy. Let's go completely dairy free. Let's also go gluten free because if that's a problem for Patricia, maybe that's also a problem for me. And then I decided to also limit sugar. We already know that, okay, limit sugar. Cut out chocolate. I completely removed chocolate from my diet well over a year ago at this point. Do I miss it? Absolutely, because I am someone who has always loved chocolate. I have got an incredible sweet tooth and I miss it. <laughs> I miss it so much. But chocolate has been a problem for me ever since I was a kid. I would always sneeze when eating it and then I discovered the soy thing and I was like, you know what, maybe it's actually beyond the soy thing and I'm just like not admitting that to myself. So I cut chocolate totally out of my diet. Then I had an experience. Okay, so I was at breakfast with Cameron. We were at first watch and I asked for an allergen friendly menu because I was going through this journey and I was like, I don't know what contains gluten. I don't know what contains dairy. I don't know. And when I tell you, I looked at this menu and I was like, everything has soy. Every last thing on this menu has soy. I am very much so a person where it's like, I know soy is a problem for me. So I don't bring any oil that has soy in it in my house. Like vegetable oil does not come in this house. I never ever thought, oh, vegetable oil is the cheap option. Of course, Catherine, restaurants are cooking with vegetable oil. Everything you're eating out at a restaurant has soy. I had no idea until I read that menu and I was just like, jaw to the floor. This whole entire time I have been contaminating my body with something I know is not good for my body. Like, that was a huge wake up call to me. I stopped eating at any restaurants where I could not have a conversation with like the server or usually it would be the server and then they'd go back to the chef. And like, I've been at restaurants before where I'm like, okay, I've got these three allergens. I have got dairy, soy, gluten. Can you tell me what I can eat? And they can just circle two things and be like, here's the modifications we can make, but here's the two options you have. Fine. I would rather do that compared to go to a place where they're like, oh no, we don't know what has soy in it or something. And I started eating at a lot of like bigger restaurants like Chipotle, for example, Five Guys, for example. They have allergen menus where everything is freaking listed out and it makes your life so much easier compared to going to local restaurants where like you have to be able to work with the staff and Depending on the restaurant, a lot of places are willing to work with you. Not every place is though. There's some restaurants where I've called and they're like, uh, yeah, we don't know. And I'm like, okay, so I'm never going to you. <laughs> and that stinks because it's really limited like what I've been able to eat. But like, especially during that beginning phase, like when I really narrow down on, I am only eating things that I know for sure do not contain dairy, soy, gluten. That is when I saw the results in my face. That is when I got a clear face, like we see today. Clear. Like insane. Yes, I do have some breakouts every now and then, but my face is clear because of my diet. It's not because of anything I put on my face. It's not because of like my LED light therapy. It's because of the food that I was putting in my body. And I am not recommending to you guys that you cut out dairy, soy, and gluten. Like I'm not. It was just like, I finally realized the food that I was putting in my body that was a problem for me. So if you want to go take an allergy test or something, talk to your doctor. Like I really do think like when we have problems within our body, it's our body screaming at us. that like, Hey, something's wrong. And my face was screaming at me for so freaking long. Hey, something's wrong. And I just didn't do anything about it. I ignored it. I said, oh, this is just my face. It is what it is. And the last thing I have on here, this is a very personal opinion, and I am sure a lot of people are not going to agree with it, but I really do think that the struggles that I have with my face is because of a lot of inner turmoil and just like struggles that I was personally going through. So 
if you guys followed me all last year, you would know it was like right after I bought this house that my face started to clear. And it, it's just like, it's also wild for me to think about, but I remember like the last time I really struggled with my face was when I was at the beach with Cameron, when we went to 30A. And that weekend was actually when my house went up for sale and I had showing. So like Fancy and I just kind of had to get out of town. Like we had to be somewhere else. I wasn't gonna leave every time I had a new showing. I was like, let me just like leave town. So Cameron and I went to the beach. And that was the last time I had any problems with my face. Like, you will see the beginning part of the home renovation series, I had some. Like, it was really like the process of me, like, touring this house, seeing it, and, and then my face cleared. And yeah, it does go hand in hand with the food I was putting in my body, and like, I made those changes a few months earlier to my diet, and like, it was probably like, my body got rid of all the toxins and stuff, and my face was healing, but I do think it was because like, I finally fully accepted this next new chapter in my life. Like, I held myself stuck for so freaking long, and like, I had a lot of inner work to do. I had some serious trauma, and I still do from like, my last relationship. Like, shit was not pretty, but... I think like once I fully, fully stepped into this next chapter of my life when I just decided to actually move forward, my face cleared. Take that with a grain of salt. It's just my own personal beliefs. <laughs> I did introduce gluten back into my diet a few months ago. I wanted to see like was gluten really, really the problem and I slowly introduced it wasn't seeing any problems and I was like, you know what, let me introduce this back into my diet because it is extremely limiting when you do have so many different allergens, like going gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, it was incredibly limiting. So I was like, if I could just be dairy-free and soy-free, that would be great. Um, dairy, I have accidentally had it introduced in food and stuff and my stomach hates dairy. Like my stomach has not liked dairy for a while, that's why I, had, like I haven't had real dairy milk in my house. I couldn't even tell you how long. Like I cut that out back in high school, you know? Full dairy ice cream, haven't had that in years. Like I was living off of Oatly ice cream for a really long time. Cheeses, absolutely no. The only thing I was allowing for a while was butter. But then like once I fully cut it out and reintroduced it back in or accidentally introduced it back in, um, caused major problems for me. But that's as to be expected. Like whenever you just cut anything out, like your body gets used to the new normal and then you throw it back in and it's like, ah, what are you doing? So I'm, I'm totally fine being dairy free the rest of my life. Like I'm happy with that, um, but gluten is now back in my diet. Sugar, I do allow every now and then. I am still not really having a lot of sugar desserts and stuff. Like I used to have to have three Oatly ice cream flavors in my fridge or freezer at all times. Uh, that is no longer me and that is no longer my life because I think I was eating far too much sugar and that was a problem, but that's it. If you found this helpful, great. If not, great. That's, that's my story. Editing Catherine coming in here, I swear I'm not sleeping even though it looks like I'm just taking a nap on my couch. I'm editing in a very comfy position. So I wanted to give you a little update on like skin care, what I actually put on my face. This is a question I get all the time. Like what is my skincare? The food I eat is my skincare. That's what I can tell you. There are no serums, no oils. I put absolutely freaking nothing on my face. And this, like I have nothing on my face right now. You can see, obviously I've got like wrinkles and things. I am nearing 30. I've never done Botox and I do not put a lot on my face. So like, it's not surprising that I've got like no wrinkle prevention. And I also just have a very expressive face. But even when it comes to washing my face, I mainly still just use water. I will use a cleanser every now and then, but it is not a lot. My skin works best when I don't put anything on it. So there's really like no products I can recommend you guys that way. It just all came down to my diet.